Hello. 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 Welcome to today's webinar. Today we are going to talk about the Climate Heritage Project. Uh, my name is Dimitra Karatasuli. I'm a junior project manager at IDEC. Um, let me share my screen so you can see the um, agenda for today. Well, Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see the your uh, wall uh, wall page. The wallpaper. Wall, uh, your wallpaper, yeah. <laughs> Some technical difficulties. One moment. Okay, I think we fixed that for now. I'm so sorry. Um, so, as I said, today's webinar is about the Climate Heritage Project. Uh, today's agenda, we're starting off with uh, the introduction about the project. Following the introduction, we have a brief presentation about the training course, which has already been developed um, by the project partners. Then following that, we have uh, Sorin, who is going to give you a walkthrough about the second result of uh, the project, the Climate Heritage Game. And finally, we have Susanna, who will present you 
uh, of ways uh, about engaging with students through the process of gamification. In the end, I believe we have we will have enough time for questions. <laughs> Okay. Stop. Now I'm going to share my screen. Great. So, about the climate heritage, uh, it is a European program. Uh, which has been developed by six um, different partners from six different European countries, uh, Spain, uh, Bulgaria, Romania, Greece, uh, France, and Portugal. Um, the project aims uh, uh, in the development of a digital game uh, which uh, improves the digital skills of students and teachers and uh, while also raising awareness about the impact of climate change on our cultural heritage uh, with an end result um, of respecti respecting uh, each country's environmental culture. Uh, the innovation of the project uh, starts at the beginning through the combination of three uh, aspects. The development of digital skills on educational, uh, educational game development, uh, raising awareness on uh, actions regarding the environment, but more specifically climate change, and uh, Last but not least, the importance of um, our local culture heritage. Okay, the first result of the project is the training course, of course, uh, which aims to guide um, teachers and trainers on the on how to develop uh, a digital a digital game. Um, which uh, can then be later used uh, on uh, their teaching activities. The second result of the project is uh, the game, the Climate Heritage Game, which aims to raise awareness on students and teachers about the importance of uh, engaging in uh, discussions about environmental issues and uh, the impact climate change has on different cultural sites uh, on our countries. The Climate Heritage Game is an open source tool which uh, will be available in all teachers uh, and uh, to all teachers and trainers uh, in all European countries. Uh, in which um, all of them can upload different types of materials such as videos and photographs and ask questions and engage with each other. Here we have, as you can see, the project's Facebook page where you can visit and see past activities. And uh, lastly, we have uh, the projects. Uh, we have the project's web page, where you can see uh, different articles and uh, more information about the project. Thank you, and I'm sorry for the first few minutes where we had some technical difficulties. Okay, let me stop and sharing my screen. Stop. 
So after that, we have we have Sheila, which will make a presentation about the training course. Thank you very much, Dimitra. So I'm Sheila. I work for a high school and vocational training school in the Basque Country in Spain. And today I'm going to present the training course for teachers that we have uh, developed in the framework of this European project. So I'm going to start by sharing my screen. Dimitra, I think you have to enable my screen sharing. One moment. Yeah. Can you share your screen now? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Can you see my uh, presentation? Yes, we can. Yeah, okay, perfect. So um, like I said, I'm going to show you um, this training course we have created. Which, is, uh, which explains how to develop uh, digital games for educational purposes. So very briefly, I will um, tell you something, a few things about the training course. Then I'll show you the overall content and the specific modules we have uh, developed. So about the training course um, on how to develop a digital game, uh, this is a complete and ready to use set of self learning modules, so it means that it will have um, self assessment questions and activities for teachers in order to guide them on how to develop a digital game in in the classroom. So um, basically, and as Dimita has explained before, the focus of this training course is the protection and understanding of cultural heritage of each. Um, or of different, let's say, um, um, sites and places from our partner countries, uh, which have been damaged by the impact of climate change throughout the years. And lastly, this training course will be useful for teachers for upskilling their digital capabilities uh, by being able to understand the mechanics behind gaming and how to create their own games for educational assignments. So even though this, this specific game is related to the protection of the cultural heritage, uh, we expect teachers to be able to develop different kinds of games with different purposes if they want to, this training course. So um, the training course lets of um, self-assessment questions and practical examples. Uh, modules can be um, downloaded in um, both PPT or Word version, lesson plans. And there is also a specific module dedicated to the case study of our um, developed game. So these are the five modules. So the first one is gamification in education um, for, well, for us, the term is associated with the use of game elements in non-game contexts, which can be, for example, the classroom. Um, it is a concept that reflects motivation, involvement, reward systems, and collaborative teaching. So basically, we think that uh, through pleasure and involvement, um, we can engage learners. Um, in, a, in a language and communication compatible with the current reality. So in the left side, you can see the specific um, contents of this um, module, but in general, it, it covers what gamification is and how it can be used. Then uh, in module two, you will find the learning library platform. This means that you will find the different uh, available platforms and resources that you can use in your game. So for example, you can integrate quizzes, missions, challenges. It will explain how or in which way, in which way you want to develop your game for educational purposes. Then um, we have the structure of the learning game, which is um, 
it's explained in three different phases. The first one being identifying pedag pedagogical resources. Then it's about the general design of the game and then how to implement this game based on the kind of game we have um, um, cho choose to, to develop or, or what kind of uh, resources you want to integrate. So how to implement this in your classroom. So the module uh, also presents the possible different kinds of games. So physical or virtual activities, simulations, role playing, etc. Then through module four, you will find the specific element of gamification that you can introduce, which is, for example, like ranking or giving badges to your students, uh, progress bars, um, well, different kinds of games, quizzes, tests that you can introduce in your game. So here you will find the specific elements. And so that you have a more um, overall or clear idea or of what a game is in this case, module five shows you the specific game we have developed in our, um, in our partnership, which is about the protection of um, our local cultural sites or cultural heritage in our countries. So um, here you'll see uh, the, the specific kind of game we have uh, developed, what kind of format, what elements of gamification we, we have introduced, uh, et cetera. So where can you find this course? The course will be available very soon on the project website. Uh, you'll be able to download the, the, um, the specific modules. And we also will promote it through our social media. So you can follow us on, on our Facebook page. And this is all from my side. If you have any questions, um, you can directly write to any of us. And we hope to make the course available soon for all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shayla. It was very interesting. Uh, so following the presentation about the training course, we have now Soren who will walk us through the game. Through the game. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, introducing the first steps, um, the first parts of the game. Now, before going actually into this uh, small educational game, I would like to invite you <clears throat> to try to guess some, uh, some uh, sounds. And for that, I will uh, share my screen um, just with the sounds. And let's see if we are all uh, here. And in guessing these sounds, you will have to write it down here on uh, chat. So you'll see, maybe there are some animals, some objects. Uh, the first one, you already saw it. Um, just give me a few seconds to prepare it. And now, please focus. Uh, we have more or less 30 participants. And let's see who can guess uh, as many as possible. And uh, of course, who is the first in uh, guessing the game, uh, in guessing the sound maybe of the games as well. Let's see, let's go with the first. Just a bit. Okay. Can you guess it? If yes, all. Well done, Christina. It's so quick. Exactly. So we started with something very simple. Let's go for the next now. All right. So the first sound, what uh, which you heard. There's a pen. Thank you. Thank you, Marta. Yes, yes, obvious. Very simple. 
Let's go with a bit more complicated one now. The first, not the second. So that machine sound. Vacuum cleaner, yes, Marta and Ana Maria, well done. Let's try uh, a few more. Okay, water running. Uh, can you be more specific? Running. Uh, where? Stop. Exactly. Okay. Next one. Okay. No. Scissors is just a half of the answer from Iran, cutting paper, exactly. Scissor cutting paper, and the last one, let's try to focus. Yes, yes, ah, oh. Not exactly a motorbike, but uh, a cat. Well done, Sandra. Thank you. Thank you for participating uh, uh, to this uh, small guessing game. Now from the guessing game, we will uh, switch to um, our small educational game based on climate heritage. And for that, I have to go a bit uh, through the, um, a short uh, intro. So. In designing this uh, this game, we we started from um, from what was planned uh, in terms of quizzes and uh, videos um, and um, possibilities offered by various platforms. I will just give you um, I will share with you um, some of them which we have used in other uh, which we consider or used in other projects. And then explain why we went through the through this one uh, for uh, for this project. Okay, we had some games in um, Unreal Engine, for example, uh, four. There we had the possibility to build uh, some focus on leaders, facilitator, or uh, even a historical game. We also used Articulate Storyline for some 2D games. And um, for this project, we have to consider the fact that uh, the, the game is based on quiz. So it's based on, it's based on questions. Participants, players will have to answer to um, to see, to hear uh, some uh, um, materials, to go through them and then to answer some quizzes. So that, so that was one uh, element to, to start from. The other one was um, the uh, various capabilities in terms of um, equipment or uh, competencies. So then we had to limit a bit. And that's why we thought to create a Moodle e-learning uh, module of the game with gamified elements included, which I will uh, show you now. And there, there is a mission, as, as you will see in, um, in the following uh, um, minutes, there is a mission uh, for participants for each uh, for each uh, archaeological site. And in each mission, there is a, a challenge to overcome, to save this uh, cultural site and to get the specific uh, badge for it. To be more specific, and there are five missions in total, uh, 
if you have the possibility, I think it's uh, easier if you go uh, together with me through the platform where the game is hosted. So there is a learning library .eu. I will uh, I will also write it on chat where you can create a user in uh, one, two minutes. You go here on login and then create an account. There are just few elements to fill in. Once you have done that, um, in order to go on a higher speed, I will not do it now. I already prepared with a, with a user this uh, uh, example. So once you have created a user, you have to confirm it on the email, and then you, you go on the platform and uh, with the login option here, uh, user password, and it will open this page. And from here, as you see, Climate Heritage is uh, among the first uh, modules available um, for you. You, you can choose the climate heritage in um, English, uh, Greek, French, um, Bulgarian, Portuguese, Spanish, and Romania. We will go for the English ones. Just click there and um, yeah, log in if you are not already. And there is a general presentation of the game where actually uh, each step is explained and uh, you see the missions and also the special badges. They are, as you will see in the in this area of the climate, you have a snorkel, boots, raft, bottle, and ice axe, and they um, they will help you to go through the game. And also there is a level system, so you will uh, start from having a a seed and then step by step to a plant and do then to a tree and a tree with. Uh, uh, with some fruits. There is a completion progress here on the right side where you can, here, you can see which areas have been discovered and which are to be discovered. And then in each uh, mission, you will have one or two special earth pieces. Um, this is a stash system. So you have to collect them uh, going through the areas, um, and I will show you a bit later. And once you have collected them, you have a puzzle to uh, get up. So there, uh, the continents can be taken. They are hidden here in into these areas of the game. And once you have collected all of them, you will get the Earth Map badge. That's another thing. If you want to see how, uh, where uh, is your progress compared with other participants, you'll go on the ranking and see the general and each person with the points. And yeah, here is the leaderboard as well. Susanna is leading, of course, because she's... Uh, from the team, but in other languages, uh, maybe other uh, colleagues or participants. Uh, so apart from uh, taking away the uh, facilitator, uh, you can see uh, here the participants and where they stay and uh, how much they progress uh, in the game. So as I said, you have a seed and then it can grow. You can help it grow up to the tree with uh, fruits. Now, how do you do this? How do you progress in the game? As this is focused on the climate heritage, um, climate change, uh, considering various uh, sites, you will uh, have an introduction, generally speaking, uh, where you get a description of what's happening in a, uh, with a place like here. Os orizes do mar e chindelesk são uma classe de invertebrados marinhos. São espinhosos, com 3 a 10 centímetros de diâmetro. And there are other videos in uh, the other areas. And then you have a quiz. You'll have to answer. Um, you get to some questions. Here is the quiz. In other places, you have a drag and drop system or filling uh, the missing blanks. And once you have answered, then 
you can progress in uh, in the climate heritage game um get more points uh go higher in the ranking and uh, levels and of course getting these missing pieces to build the continent mission one is on the portugal uh focus then uh, we have spain and we have bulgaria these are the three main missions with um uh complex uh, uh system of uh, of uh quizzes and uh, content and then we have two extra so with uh, greece and uh, france i will let you discover through as i said filling the gates drag the words uh, drag and drop filling the missing words or uh, quizzes once you have finished it then you can uh, go and discover more on the follow up or uh, as i said assemble the puzzle that is in uh, just a few minutes what you can do how you can uh, uh, play um, alone or together with your students with your participants this climate heritage game a uh, small educational game thank you very much thank you Sharon, for explaining us the game um we have now susanna who will make a presentation about engaging with students through the gamification Susanna, I think you're muted. Okay, okay. I don't know um, if I can share my uh, my screen. I I don't know if you're seeing it now. We can see it now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oop. Okay. Um, so it's a pleasure to be here representing the AEA, Agrupamento de Escolas de Alcanena. Alcanena is a small uh, village uh, in uh, central Portugal. It's near Fatima. Um, so uh, it's a small uh, village, a small town but with huge uh, pollution problems because we have a tannery industry in this area so our students are from a very um, key, uh, small age they are um, keen about these problems these pollution problems and the defense of the environment so um, this game was uh, an opportunity for them to apply all the investigations that that they have already done before along these last years uh, around the pollution theme so um how to actively engage students with gamification is something that we try to do in our school uh, almost each and every day <laughs> because as you know uh, uh, in nowadays the children have uh, di uh, direct contact with technological devices since an early age so they almost uh, born knowing how to play with uh, with uh, a tablet <laughs> so for them it's very easy to use this kind of, of devices and the, the question is, how can we take advantage of these uh, self-developed skills to motivate students in the learning process? What advantages can be obtained in this process? Um, uh, that was uh, a student of ours, um, one of our students that is playing, not uh, quite in our school, because this is in, in a science center which is very near our school. It's around uh, five miles from our school. We have this advantage of having a science center very near our school. And we um, work a lot with them. Um, also, uh, not, o not only in uh, these gamification aspects, but uh, especially uh, in what concerns the, the field uh, exploration, the, the going outside and, and explore the nature. So there are very, very, um, there are our, our great partners in this, in this work, in this kind of work with our students. 
So the gamification concept, um, I think Sheila uh, thought ab uh, um, talked about it already. So I won't be um, very ins insist. I won't insist very much in this in this gamification concept. Uh, everybody knows a little bit uh, already about it. Um, so benefits of using this uh, teaching strategy in the integral formation of students com when compared to traditional teaching. It improves the assimilation of knowledge, obviously, because when students are, um, are enjoying the learning process, it's more probable, uh, the, probab uh, the probab probability of them to um, to um, understand what they are um, uh, learning, it's it's bigger. So it improves the simulation of knowledge. It makes the learning process more enjoyable, of course, and it develops autonomy because they uh, must uh, do. do the game by themselves of course of course they can do it uh, in a collaborative way but um it uh, in in each case it uh, it's something that uh, it's more autonomy it's a more autonomy uh, ta task and sorry and not only um something that the teacher has to to be there uh, uh, and and orientate uh, to do uh, an orientation of the work um, it increases concentration because um, of course they want to go further they want to be the best uh, in the game so uh, i have this experience already because i i, I uh, trained uh, my student, my students. Um, I, I did the the, um, the training uh, uh, activity with my students and uh, with the climate heritage game, and I saw I saw it. They wanted to do the best. They wanted to to get the higher uh, score. So they they were very concentrated doing the the, the uh, responding um, the um, the questions. It improves students' outcomes uh, through immediate feedback because they they know what they where they went wrong and they uh, know well I I will try to do best next time I will try again and I will uh, improve my my score so it encourages it encourages persistence they of course they don't give up unless they they got get higher and higher in the score so it's something it's a process that it's it's engaging to the students um technological tools that can be used to implement games in classrooms there are lots of them i i um, in, uh, i indicate here some, only a few of them and especially the ones that I like the most and, and, and that I'm more used to, to, to use in um, uh, uh, my, uh, more used to work in my classes. Uh, Kahoot is one of them, of course. Genially, uh, it's very interesting to do infographics, for instance. Um, um, Educa Play is also very interesting. Mind, Mind Meister and Poplet are very interesting for uh, to do brainstorming. Um, quizzes and Socrative uh, are very nice uh, tools uh, to do assessment uh, of a task, of a, um, um, an activity. Um, Ed Puzzle is very, very interesting, and I discovered it uh, only recently, as as well as Word Wall. Uh, they're they are very, very interesting, both of them, because um, um, they 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 uh, uh, permit. Uh, I don't know, Dimitra. <laughs> I think you have your phone. You have your your micro. Yes, your micro. Sorry. Your microphone. Sorry. Um, Ed Puzzle and Word Wall. I, I was saying it, I only discovered it uh, recently. They're very, very nice because 
uh, add puzzle, for instance, we can use a video and then we can uh, introduce questions along the video. So they, uh, the students are seeing, uh, watching the video and they are responding, they are answering the questions and the, it makes them to be more attentive to, to what they are uh, watching. Uh, Jigsaw Planet, it's very interesting because we can do puzzles from uh, almost any pictures that we have and so it's uh, it's nice to introduce a, te a theme a new content for instance uh, this is a picture of my students playing the learning library the the, the climate heritage game in the learning library um, this learning library uh, Sorin has already explained a lot about it so uh, we can have, we have there lots of tools that we we can use. We have different types of quizzes. We have uh, a ranking uh, medals, rewards. We have progress bars. Um, we can insert other tools in this in this um, platform. So it's a very very interesting uh, platform. And the the game that we created, our students uh, loved it. So they 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 play it and uh, not. Uh, they were supposed to play only two parts of it, but they went on uh, all, all, along the, the, all the class, all the class, and, and until the end, and they almost uh, missed the lunchtime because they want to go further and further in the in the ranking. So uh, they they liked it a lot. Um, so um, I think we have a, a, a good feedback from them. Um, the preparation phase, uh, uh, of course, we cannot uh, apply, uh, do applica uh, an application of a game in a classroom without a preparation phase. There's a lot of work involved in creating using a game for uh, it to serve as an effective learning tool. Um, we must bear in mind the, 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 what it is supposed to serve. The, what is the the goals that we intend to to achieve? Um, so uh, we must encourage student creativity and motivation, also as well, but aligned with the curriculum and the um, all the the the, the 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 contents that we we want them to learn to learn. So before choosing or creating the game, the teacher, of course, has to decide about the type of content that he wants to effectively teach the students. Um, I, uh, I also have here um, other, other aspects like uh, a uh, screenplay, define a screen, a screenplay, a plot, a game of, of, of objectives, a class plan, uh, define ob uh, learning objectives also, start with a learning objective and then work backwards. For instance, I want them to learn the impact of uh, acid rains in monuments and so I, I could go backward and, and to try to create um, questions um, about it in the game. Um, I didn't have to do that because there are there were already in the climate heritage game lots of questions about uh, this this um, this content uh, particularly um, um, finding balance between playing and learning or what are the goals of the games the learning goals and align and align uh, both both of them and. Uh, uh, giving a feedback design also. So I try to do a lesson. Uh, I, I show here just a, a brief lesson plan template about the activity that I did with my students. 
uh, it was on the subject of chemistry because I forgot to tell you, but I'm a chemistry and physics teacher. So uh, um, the, the uh, lesson focus and objectives were, uh, the title of the lesson were about the impact of acid rain on limestone, on limestone. So the lesson focus and objectives were to understand the effect of acidification of water by action of carbon dioxide through an experimental activity. We did this experimental activity here where I stand now in the, the school lab, chemistry lab. So we, we did this experimental activity of uh, um, create uh, carbon dioxide and then make it bubble in water to create the acidification of water or, or to increase the acidification of water and then to check the effect of an acid solution on limestone on a limestone sample by carrying out a simple experimental activity just just drop some some acid uh, rain some um, acid water on limestone and see what happens and uh, to apply the acquired knowledge in understanding the effect of the destruction of monuments by action of by the action of uh, acid rain and recognize from an interdisciplinary perspective that climate change as one of the major problems of current current environmental issues and relate them to hair pollution resulting from the increase in greenhouse gases so um all of these as, as these several steps um in the end they played the game as an assessment tool uh, they were supposed to play the mission from greece because it has the part of the historical monuments and um, the effects of acid rain uh, on them but also they want they they liked and they tried and they played the um, the Praia Jurassica, the Portuguese part, because um, the effect also of acid rain on the paleontological records that we have, it's very clear. And so I, I agreed with them. Yes, you're right. You can play also that one. And, and then they, oh, we would like to play also Spain and Bulgaria. So go on, go ahead and play <laughs> and play all of them. So they, they loved it. So they loved it. Um, I, I now just um, giving some ideas that where, where this uh, game can be played and how can it be integrated in school subjects. Uh, it can be integrated, for instance, in sports and physical education. Um, this is an image of our uh, small river. Well, before going in such a, an activity, an activity like this one, uh, but we can uh, we are we are talking now about this river. We can talk about the um, the fish from Spain. <laughs> or we can talk about um, the Corsica Valleys. So uh, uh, before the, the physical education teacher goes out in a, in a walk, he can uh, do uh, the, the game uh, or after the walk to see if the students were attentive to uh, some details um around the, the the environment where they they went uh of course there are other subjects like um for instance uh, biology also here here is um, a valley from corsica of course they, they can explore what kind of flora and fauna it lives in this in this area um and use the the game in the end uh, for instance uh, as a, um, an assessment tool for what they've learned uh, in this activity. Uh, also in geology, uh, a formation um, of, of rocks, uh, a waterfall formation. Um, they can learn um, and, they, and they can use the game again 
uh, like an assessment tool or for motivation in the beginning of, a, of the activity. In Greece, for instance, also the impact of acid rain on limestone, on limestone uh, it can be included in chemistry. Um, and in history, for instance, um, this part of uh, the history of the, the Escadi the, the, in Spain. Um, so the, the history teacher can prepare uh, the flipped classroom where students are encouraged to research and then go there and see the impact of the, the, um, the, um, the climate change in, in, the, in the, the place. Uh, uh, also in geography and also in citizenship, uh, citizenship, uh, the, the students can debate the theme of climate change and can play and can play the game in the end as uh, an interactive activity. Well, I think that's all. I hope I didn't speak too much because that's one of my problems. Sorry. <laughs> I hope everybody uh, can uh, could understand uh, uh, what I said, and um, I hope I give some ideas to my colleagues uh, of things uh, uh, that they can do with uh, this uh, learning plat learning uh, library platform. So, uh, and our climate heritage game. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Susanna. It was a very interesting presentation about uh, gamification especially the, the last um, uh, the last information you shared with us. Uh, okay. So um, we have time for questions now, I think. So if anyone likes to share anything. Yeah, sorry, I just uh, took the moment to uh, put the questionnaire of uh, satisfaction that you are more than welcome to fill <laughs> just uh, you have the link in the in the box below <laughs> ah okay how do how you do that wait i i shared it don't worry wait, I'll take okay your... sorry no problem <laughs> <laughs> I failed. <laughs> okay, now there it is. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. It happened Thanks to me in the beginning too. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone has any questions that would like to be answered now, you can send us a message here. Okay, there is one question. Are there plans for creating more games? I, I think that is something that maybe Sorin can. There is a follow up area in um, on the module down um, I think is the last activity and um, there um, there is a proposal regarding the possibility to uh, use as a test uh, space where to come with the questions and they um, and then uh, a team to try to adapt them into into a small uh, game please go uh, there and uh, uh, you can read more information about this text. You're welcome. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Does anyone have any other questions that would like to share? I don't think there are any more questions. <laughs> So uh, thank you everyone for, oh, great, great. Uh, if I understood correctly, we can, someone is asking, we can create our game regarding our teaching purposes. I think uh, Soren can answer that as well. Yeah, as I explained, um, you can um, you can take it as an example, and based on this example, thinking about your city or um, a region, uh, if you have something similar <clears throat> with um, with the climate heritage uh, sites, to build your own questions and route. Um, <clears throat> And for that, we can help you with the with the support showing how this was made for uh, for the uh, missions uh, presented uh, uh, in this webinar. I just let there the uh, address of the group. Um, you can find anyway these contacts on the website uh, of the project, and we I strongly recommend you before um, um, to making your proposal to go through these uh, missions because that can help you understand understand uh, this paradigm of, uh, of thinking in uh, uh, building this small educational uh, game. Simple game, of course there. Yeah. From this, uh, we can go higher uh, with the mechanics and uh, possibilities. But this is a very a simple and a clear one, uh, as explained before. So thank you very much for uh, Sovin to have replied to all the technical questions regarding the games. Uh, thank you very much uh, for my partners to have presented this webinar. I'm Stella, I'm representing Etude et Chantier, uh, the person in charge of the, <laughs> the leaning partner of the project. And uh, thank you all for your participation. I think it's, uh, we can say that uh, it's a good, uh, <laughs> a good webinar. Thank you very much for the, for making it happen and uh, to the participate. And uh, uh, I uh, strongly encourage you to fill the satisfaction questionnaire that I put in the uh, in the chat, uh, that Shella put in the chat actually. <laughs> and uh, yes, as Sorin said, uh, don't uh, hesitate to send us an email if you have any questions regarding the project and how you can make a, a, a module and a game. And uh, thank you all for being here. <laughs> for uh, this webinar. Thank you to the next one. In the next one, have a gorgeous afternoon. Thank you, everyone. Oh, have a nice day. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. It was a pleasure to be with all of you. <laughs> bye.
Hello everyone, can you hear me?